We are in a teacher shortage of biblical proportions. Uh, we have had a shortage two years in a row. We've lost 7,000 teachers have left their current jobs. During this school year, 1,121 teachers have left their jobs. Uh, uh, and the other stat I share with you each time, and this is the more scary, the scarier stat, is for the fifth year in a row, 30% fewer college kids are majoring in teacher education. So we have teachers leaving like crazy. We've got fewer kids going into teacher education. And what are we doing to solve that crisis? Three years ago, the governor of this state stood across the hall in that body in front of us and promised teachers a raise to get them to the national average. We applauded. Three weeks later, the House Ways and Means put it in their budget to give teachers a raise that would get them to the national average. Back then it was $3,500 to get them to the national average. And it, it passed in the House budget. The only reason we didn't do it, because in the middle of the Ed Reform debate, I tried to amend that, and many of you busted me and said, you know the Senate is gonna do the same thing. Well, we didn't. Now, in fairness, we didn't because COVID did. I think that. We did nothing that year. We did a continuing resolution the next year. Last year, we took a good step forward. We made a $1,000 increase to teacher pay, and every single teacher in the state got that $1,000 increase. But we still haven't made that final step. We haven't kept our word to our teachers. Promises made, promises kept. Our teachers were promised that we would pay them at the national average. We did 1,000 last year. We're not doing it this year. Other occupations in South Carolina, we're told all the time we ought to run schools like a business. What's happened with pay at McDonald's? Doubled. Pay at Starbucks, you get signing bonus and probably housing. Pay at our industrial plants, we're offering increases like never before. But we're not doing that in this Senate budget. In the year we've got the most money ever, this budget, and you can read it upwards, sidewards, backwards, left to right, right to left, there is no requirement for any numbered pay raise for teacher anywhere in the budget. The only requirement is if you your starting salary as a district is less than thirty-eight thousand, you'll have to raise that salary from thirty-six to thirty-eight thousand and proportionally increase from beyond, and the money will follow to do so. So some districts, less than twenty, could get two thousand dollars to do that requirement. But if you're paying right now at thirty-seven nine, you're going to get money because you're below the thirty-eight, but you ain't necessarily getting two thousand dollars. The rest of the districts in the state are getting additional money. Senator, uh, uh, Senator Dorchester mentioned that, and he's absolutely right. They're getting additional money, and they may get some teachers raises, they may not, but for the first time in the history of South Carolina, we will pass a teacher raise that not every teacher in the state will get that raise. This budget has the money to do that. We've got the formula to do that. This amendment I'm offering, and I'm not gonna yield just quite yet, but this amendment that I'm offering is going to use the same process we used last year on the $1,000 to make sure we put the same money on the line. I don't take money from some other budget. I use the same amount of money. The House has the same amount of money Senate Finance has. But put the money on the line and make sure that every teacher in South Carolina gets that raise. And why should we do it? Because this is the one year we actually have the money. And we're not doing it. The only districts that will benefit, the only teachers that will benefit is if they're in that handful of districts that are paying below 38. And mind you, the house went up to 40. This one goes up to 38. How are we doing with other states? North Carolina teachers, 4,000 more than South Carolina teachers get. Average teacher salary in North Carolina is 4,000 more. In Georgia, $7,247 more. And so Senator from Ori talked about police officers that might leave to go to North Carolina or Georgia. He's absolutely right. I joined with him to co-sponsor the amendment. I'm using peer pressure and Hercules to get in to co-sponsor this one. But teachers on the board in North Carolina and Georgia can leave and automatically get 4,000 more or 7,427 more. But thank God for Mississippi. Thank God for Mississippi. No matter how bad things get, Senator Williamsburg, there's always Mississippi. Because whatever we do, no matter how bad we suck, Mississippi is always worse. Until recently. Mississippi just passed. First year teacher salaries started 41.5. Mississippi, 
not generally the bastion of liberalism and communism. <laughs> Mississippi, a, typically a conservative red state, a state that's not full of uh, more wealth than we have, just increased first year teacher pay, not to 38,000 like the Senate budget does, not to 40,000 like the House at least says that they're doing. They increased theirs, legitimately fully state funded, to 41,500. But equally important to that though, they make sure that every teacher in the state of Mississippi is going to get a $4,250 raise. While this Senate finance budget only guarantees any raise to only the districts that are paying below 38, which is just a couple handful, and then it gives additional monies to others that would not come anywhere near $4,000. It would be lucky to come up with $2,000 in some cases. But Mississippi, $4,250. And then just two hours ago, the state of Alabama, not known as the bastion of liberalism, the bastion of communism, I don't know that, that, that even the senator from Charleston has visited Alabama lately. But the state of Alabama just approved just minutes ago a 4% raise that when you distribute that to every single teacher in the state of Alabama, unlike ours that does raises for some, not for others, different amounts, is almost twice what we'd be paying in South Carolina. <coughs> and so when South Carolina teachers see that the business world is increasing salaries, in some cases our fast food restaurants are doubling the salaries and we're told to run like a business, we see North Carolina paying 4,000 more, Georgia paying 7,247 more. Thank God for Mississippi is paying $4,250 raise for every single teacher in the state, fully funded by the state. Alabama 4% raise, our teachers are saying, show me the money, especially when we have more money than we've ever had at one time. We'll hear in a few minutes that, but we're giving flexibility. I've not met a single teacher in the state of South Carolina that said we'd rather have flexibility than a pay raise. We're not having problems with flexibility, we're having problems finding teachers. The fourth point is EIA. EIA was implemented in 1984. And the purpose of that was to do new innovative programs to support teaching and learning in our schools, Senator Provincial. And since that time, we've never had a local match. Since the invention of the EIA, the legislation has required full funding of the state to districts. With this new Senate finance proposed budget, we're now going to be requiring locals to come up with a 25% match in a year where we have more money than we've ever had and supposedly we're spending it on public education. So if we pass this budget without my amendment, we're going to have less future money for vocational courses. We'll delete future, all future money for dual credit courses. No state mandated full, fully funded pay increase for our teachers. Our local businesses are left wondering why do we have the extra money and we're not helping train their workers. Our parents are going to ask, with the rising cost of college, why would you cut funding, uh, a weighted funding, for dual credit courses when I got my kid this close to college? And our teachers will ask that as well. So what does this amendment do? And then I, I will entertain a question. But I want to make sure I share with this. This amendment, what it does is it restores the wages, first of all. It, and it doesn't add anything more. This, this amendment takes the current amount of dollars that the Senate Finance used and uses those same amount of dollars. The only thing it does is it keeps the waiting for our vocational courses. The second thing it does is it keeps the waiting for our dual credit courses. The third is it doesn't add the match as well. And then the last thing it does is it addresses that critical teacher shortage uh, that we have in South Carolina. And we talk about the teacher shortage in South Carolina, and we look at the actual data. We ask our teachers what it is that they want us to do. There's not a single teacher. If you go back home tonight and you ask your teachers, what are your top five things you want us to do in this budget? Not a single teacher will ask for flexibility. They're going to say, show me the money. Promises made, promises kept. We were in that room when the governor made the promise to take us to the national average. We're watching every other state to include freaking Mississippi and Alabama are doubling and tripling and quadrupling the amount of money that we're offering teachers. Our teachers are gonna ask me that. 
So what are teachers asking for? In a recent poll by the SCPA, uh, all teachers in the state, 74% of teachers say that the pay is currently not adequate in our state. And they cited the Mississippi information and the fact that this budget doesn't guarantee any specific pay increase for teachers in the state other than the districts below the 38. Teachers in South Carolina are earning 19.2% less than compar comparable workers. And so if you take people that work in South Carolina that have the same degrees, the same years of experience, teachers' wages have declined while other workers have gone up. If you look at adjusting for inflation, believe it or not, in the last 10 years, if you take inflation figures from 10 years ago and inflation years figures for today, our teachers are making $2,179 less in today's dollar than they were making 10 years ago. South Carolina is one is through one of only three states that has seen a decline in teacher pay adjusted for inflation in the last 10 years. And we rank 50th in change of teacher salary over the last several years. Uh, that's not good because we ain't got the 50 states. And when teachers asked what they should do, they did say things like your paperwork, need for mental health, environmental support, less standardized testing, but overwhelmingly by far, what our teachers ask us to do in the year where we have the most money ever, 96% said, pass a significant pay increase. And so again, what this is going to do, number one, is it is going to